got some leaves. We're going to get some fibers out of them. These are from uh, sisal plants, I believe they're called. They grow uh, by my work. There's a million of them, so I want to make a string. Uh, maybe for fishing or maybe just clean the fibers up and have them. And uh, it's pretty easy to do. So, put them in my bucket with my flint. Got a nice little piece of flint with the scraper type edge I can scrape with. And a pointy edge I can cut with. But I like this scraper. You know, it can scrape. Hopefully not cut the fibers too much. So. <laughs> I got a KFC cup with ice in it. I'm putting the uh, scraped fibers in so they don't dry out. I have a rubber mallet I'm gonna try I did one just scraping and I'm gonna pound one and see if it's easier to uh, to do so the first one I'll do for you will be the pounding one we'll just take one of these they're kind of pointy on the end and uh, do some uh, they're a little bit dry because I actually picked them yesterday. And it might be too dry for pounding, so we'll skip straight to what I just did. I'll hold this end down. Take now I used my knife, but I want to try and use a piece of flint. I'll take our flaker. That's not a good flake, it's too sharp. Let's see what else we got in here. Yeah. Might as well just do the uh, cheater way. <laughs> and use my knife. It's not really cheater. I mean, we live in modern times, but See, this stuff is kind of dry. And all I'm doing is just uh, lightly scraping off the green. Now back in the day, <laughs> I think if they never sat in my van for two days, you could pound this pulp off but it's dried down to like uh, like a soft leather right now so just keep scraping that off it's pretty weird because almost every plant has some kind of fiber in it this is some flowery tall stalk looking thing I don't really know what it's called but I did one as an experiment and uh, made a little thread out of it and it was pretty strong I don't know if it was stronger than my my favorite which is dog bane but it's a little bit easier see how cleanly and easy that's coming off this is the back side it's the hard side if I get them, um, if I actually like this, I'll get more and, you know, scrape them and let them dry and put them away. And then whenever you need them, I guess you could just dampen them and they'll come back to be usable. Now this, right now, this is all a gas, so, 
We'll see. And all I'm doing is holding the knife at a little bit more than a 90 degree angle so it doesn't dig in. Um, but I don't want it to dig in. I want it to scrape, you know. And as I go, I'm getting the, getting the feel for it. And, uh, you know, it's going a little faster. Now this thick stalk I might end up cutting off. Because the fibers are pretty bunched together down there. So, you know, it's a little bit tedious. Back in the day, they had <laughs> this was much more important to them than it is to us, you know, so they could you know, and their time was spent. I mean, their job was you know, unlike my job, my job requires me to you know work quite a bit up on roofs and stuff but um, their job was was doing this stuff so they could uh, gather food be warm protect themselves from animals or other people All throughout history, people have not been nice. Still aren't nice. Um, got all these laws trying to make people be nice. And I guess it stops some people, but... You know, I always heard from my grandma and other other people, you know, the lock only keeps the honest people out. <laughs> the law only only keeps the law-abiding people from breaking it. You know. I was in Saudi Arabia and uh, during Desert Storm, you know, and I had. Uh, some pretty high up people in the uh, Saudi Arabian Islamic uh, group, you know, whatever you want to call them, tell me that basically nothing's a sin unless they get caught. You know, and uh, <laughs> to me, you know, if you do wrong, you do wrong. Uh, if it's some dumb law made by people, you know, that's one thing, but I mean, for example, speed limits, speed limits, nobody goes a speed limit. If you do, Sometimes you get a ticket for uh, impeding traffic. <laughs> and if you're only around here lately, if you're only going 10 miles over the speed limit, you know, you get honked at and you get stupid looks and you go a couple miles and there's a wreck and a lot of times there's people that don't live through the wreck. All because somebody was in a hurry. 
and then they get in that wreck and it stops the whole highway for hours and hours and sometimes you know the whole day all because we got a rush we got a rush 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 and because you know nobody's more important than yourself you know everybody's trying to get somewhere but you're getting there is uh, a little more important than they're getting there Where I live right now, there's lots of construction and there's wrecks every day. And the speed limit's down to 45. And it doesn't matter. And the only thing, uh, you know, with all the hate and police movement, the only thing police do now is. You know, once there's a wreck, they come and write tickets to the survivors and, you know, give their condolences to the people that, uh, that didn't. And if everybody lives, they try to figure out who was the most at fault. Turn in the insurance. Things to think about while you're just sitting around scraping leaves. <laughs> now you could do this with the flint flake, and I could make a nice flint flake to do it, but the knife is uh, pretty good, and uh, you know, I never claimed to be uh, uh, all stone or or whatever guy. I enjoy the making stuff and uh, making the bows and arrows and shooting them. And you know, my channel got a lot of flint napping on it, but that's because at the time that was all I could do. Really, I uh, was on the injured reserve, and it was winter and. Now I'm, I made a bunch of arrow blanks the other day. Today I'm going to make a bunch of fibers. And uh, make a fishing string. That's my plan. Make a fishing string and wax it. And take one of my long pieces of bamboo. And make a uh, tenkara or the uh, smaller Japanese one is... Uh, I forget how you say that one, but it's a small, it's a, just a little short pole and you try to catch, their, their, their thing is they try to catch the smallest fish, you know, whoever catches the smallest fish wins, and uh, they, uh, <laughs> they catch some small fish, they use hooks I can't even see, but I'm going to fish in my creek with the Tankara, and my little creek goes down about a quarter of a mile down the road it goes into a bigger creek and there's some pretty decent fish in that one there's a few in mine over the years when i would go fishing if i would get bait my bait would have little catfish in it and i would put them in the creek and you know once they get so big they're pretty nice to catch and i caught some perch out of the river and put them in my creek which which isn't transplanting because they go my creek goes into the river what Roman what Roman I'm doing something honey Why you want me to come inside? You want me to throw? You want me to play with you? Okay. 
I'll wrap it up and I'll come in. I'll be in in five minutes, okay? <laughs> Grandson's more important than making string, guys. As soon as I finish this one, I'm going in, and that'll be the video, too. I'll make another one when I actually make the string. Daddy, what? Crazy way into the door. Okay. <laughs> he went crazy way into the door. He's, uh, he's my little buddy. I guess I should show you up close. Look, there's some good fibers in there. They're nice and straight, and you can, uh, I bet if I glued this on like a bow back, it would make a good a good backing. Wouldn't exactly be sinew because it doesn't stretch, but it would keep the bow back from breaking, and it might even be a little bit camouflaged, you see, with the colors and the stripes that look like grass. I might try that. I'm starting two bows. I want to make two uh, short bows. Uh, I'm going to make them out of hickory because that's all I have right now. And uh, try to make them a little, a little like a Comanche or Anastasi or something. A short bow, 24 inch draw, 45 or 50 pounds. And you'll see why when I get them done, how I hunt. I hunt sitting in a chair like this and I set everything up. So I have a narrow window and I just have a short draw and I can draw basically sitting right here and uh, you know shoot that deer from six or seven feet away or squirrels or whatever may come along. So I don't need a long draw. I just need a good arrow and a sharp tip. So. Okay, and with that, we're done for now. I got all them to do, but I'm going to go in and play with my grandson. Have a good day. All right, we're trying a new looky there. Uh, chest cam, I'm going to call it. <laughs> trying to get where you can see. And I can see what you can see. And I think I got it. And, uh, but anyways, let's, uh, you know, here's the fibers that I made from part one, um, keeping them damp in the water. And what I'm working on is a string. Now, if you're making a bow string, I got to tell you guys, you see all these guys uh, making two ply strings. With plant fiber, you want to make a three ply string that is made of a two ply string and the reason for that is it evens it out see all these little burrs and stuff when this is done I'll coat this with wax because this is going to be a fishing string for tenankara and you notice I made this end real small that's where my leader is going to go and then as I go I'm getting a little thicker because I want it to be like a fly line and you know whip out and land gently here but have enough weight to actually cast so 
this is the same old process I mean you've seen a thousand videos of people doing away towards away towards you twist each fiber away and then you twist it forward some people twist forward and then away I twist away and then forward it goes pretty fast especially when you have good fibers long fibers if you have long fibers you don't have to twist as much now I don't need see I've got a couple almost three feet I've been doing this about 20 minutes I'm, I'm not the best cordage maker but I firmly believe in making smaller plies you hear that thing yelling at me <laughs> it's making smaller plies and uh, more of them it makes the cordage even more even now you see I'm getting down I have a little bit there and a little wisp here what I do is instead of taking a big piece you see a lot of guys I take a big piece like this and, and fold that in I'll take this piece and I'm going to put that in Oop, get this out of the way here but first thing I do is I shred this up now all this is going in my bundle but I shred it up a little bit harder with the camera in my face but I think I got this camera thing figured out from now on I'm gonna have a lot better uh, seeing me do videos overlap it a little bit twist it away now you see I shredded that so it's softer instead of one big piece and it makes even uh, makes it easier to twist now this is some kind of plant I got at work which I showed in part one the leaves but you see once you get once you get going uh, you know it's not as easy as going to the store and buying a thing of fishing line but it's pretty fun when you make your own line and uh, you go out and you catch fish I've got the uh, ten I'm gonna I got some bamboo but none of my bamboo is really long enough uh, you know it'll work for my little creek but it won't work for the creeks I want to fish in now I see both of these are about the same and they're both getting short so what I'll do is I'll add one I add one bundle there oops I dropped it give it a few twists then I get another bundle it's a little bit harder trying to show everybody but this is how it goes it's just a messy thing now I got all these fibers all and the cool thing is you're gonna twist them all so it don't really matter how straight they are we'll just put them in there I know my cordage making isn't the best did I just mess up and go the wrong way yeah twist away and forward and then you see that long piece I just fold that in no use wasting that now the most important thing to me I mean if I was making it for a bow I would take time and make it much more even and I would sort these fibers out and have them in bundles ready to go but this is going to be a heavy fishing string so as long as it's not too thin in any one spot it'll reel in a fish now you see we're short I'm going to set this down and set my water on there so I can have two hands and uh, 
I always shred the bundle up. Sometimes, you know, depending on how it works out. Now you see these are all kind of short. So I'll split the bundle even again. And I'll just take this bundle in the middle and put it in. But most of the time I try to have a long side and a short side so they alternate. But like I said, this is uh, going to be a heavy fishing string. I'm planning on catching some... Not huge, but decent fish out of the creek that my creek goes into. Now you see, I got a it got away from me a little bit there. I'm kind of thick, but it doesn't really matter that much. But anyways, this is a lot of rinse and repeat. So I thought this would be a good section of video, and I thought this would be how I could nap too, and you could see what I'm doing. Uh, I got it figured out and uh, so and even when I'm doing other stuff you see I was going all nice and even and then I got a thick spot because I got worried too much about video but this cord is strong and uh, once it's done I'll dry it I'll burn off all these little uh, flyer pieces and then I'll rub it with beeswax and that'll help glue it even better and uh, that's how I make a fishing string. All right, there's about five feet of fishing string I made so far. I'm going to take a video, go up and get an ice cream cone, and uh, go up and upload the video, come back, work some more leaves. I need to make two or three times this. I'd like to have at least 15 feet to cast. So, but you know, it's a lot of rinse and repeat, so you can get the idea. And uh, next, uh, Next part will be making the Tinkara pole.